Hello, Cal kids. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean. Today we're going to look at something called the radius and interval of convergence for these things called power series. So radius and inter interval of convergence, those are two separate things, but they do correlate with one another. So once we get the interval of convergence, the radius is really, really easy. So what I have in front of us here is um, some examples of power series where we just have a very basic first term, second term, third term, and so forth. If n starts at zero in this case. So the difference between these two things is just this x minus c, kind of like what we've been doing, is where the power series is centered around. It's centered around x equals c. So here it would be centered around x equals zero because you don't have this minus c inside with the x. So that's an important thing to be able to recognize. We want to know where the center is when we do these problems. That is helpful because the center is always going to be part of the domain. And so if we can recognize the center, that's part of the domain of where this thing is converging. And the domain is, well, yeah, the domain is all the X values where the power series converges, meaning the center is always going to converge at least to the center, and then many times more than just the center. So there's three ways a power series may converge. The first is that it converges to an interval. So not just one particular point, not to infinity, not everything, but just one specific interval. So if you would just draw a quick little line here, uh, I'm going to put x equals c right here in the middle. So it's going to converge on an interval. So let's say from the, there's the center. It's going to go from, I'll just make up a to b. It doesn't really matter what we're saying here. So if it converges from a to b, so it's converging it all on these points, that's all the domain and it's converging there. Then now it might be an open circle at a, it might be a closed circle. It might be open at B or closed at B. So what I'm saying is that it might not include the endpoints or it might include the endpoints. And then this distance here is called the radius. So I'll just call that R. So from the end point, excuse me, from the edge of the interval to the center is the radius. And then from the center to the other side of the interval, that is also R. That's what the radius is called. So that's what we'll put for this second part here. Radius is the distance from the center to the edge of the interval. And so therefore, if we figure out the interval that, where it's converging, that's why you can say the radius is so easy to figure out. You just go from the center to the outside edge. Pretty quick and easy. Now, another way besides just an interval is that it might converge to all real numbers. And then the third way it might converge is that it converges only to the center to the center x equals c, and then that's it. Nowhere else will it be converging. Okay, so these are the three ways it's gonna converge. You get that written down, and then let's uh, look at how we figure this out. We have an interval of convergence, and it's the set of values for convergence. So when we talk about interval convergence, it's just where is it converging? We are going to use the ratio test. Now we've done the ratio test before. This is going to be a little bit different how we use it, but it's, it starts off using the same thing. This a of n plus one over a of n, you take the absolute value of that, have n approach infinity. So when you do that, if it's less than one, now don't get confused with what we did before with, uh, with, with the ratio test. Uh, if it's, it's, these are kind of different rules that we say for convergence. If it's less than one, then the series is converging to an interval or maybe to an, to an interval or on an interval. So if it's less than one, it's, it's converging to an interval. That's bugging me. I'm saying to an interval. I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? To an interval, on an interval, whatever. All right, now, if this thing goes to zero, then the series converges for all values of x. If the, you do the ratio test and that limit equals zero, then it's converging basically to everything in negative infinity to infinity. And then if the limit uh, for this ratio test, if it equals infinity, then the series is converging only to the center x equals c. So these are the ways that we come up with these three different scenarios. We know that if these three things happen, if one of these three things happen, that's how we identify where this interval of convergence is. Okay, so now we're going to put this to practice. Oh, wait, I should say this just to bring in into focus because I realize every time I'm doing this, when I see it equals infinity, my immediate thought is, oh, infinity, that's like everything. And I immediately think for all values of x, but that's not right. So just be careful about that. That's a mistake that I make sometimes when I'm doing these. So it's if it if the limit equals zero, then it's for all values of x. If the ratio test limit equals infinity, then it's only the center. So just kind of make sure you got those straight. Okay, let's do some practice. Can I tell you right now, please write small. I know I didn't give you a ton of room on this, so write pretty small in here. I'm gonna start up in these right-hand corner, and I'm gonna say the limit. 
as n approaches infinity, absolute value of, and I'm going to take this thing and plug in an n plus 1. So I'm going to do this pretty small, n plus 1 over 3 to the n plus 1. And then this thing, x minus 5 raised to the n plus 1. Now I multiply by the reciprocal of this thing, but left alone. Nothing changes. So the n is going to go on bottom with this x minus 5. Okay, and I apologize that you're, I'm making you write so small. I didn't want the, my notes to run over to like an extra page just for this problem here. Okay, so now this we're going to simplify down. Now, I'm not going to show all the steps of how we simplify because we've done that a whole bunch in several different lessons now, including with the ratio test, how to simplify these things. So I may be skipping some steps on this. So let me show you the simplification. And here we have this thing simplified. So you can kind of check my work very carefully there and try and see where I've come up with these things for simplification. Now, what are we doing here? Which scenario does this, what does this apply to? Which of these three things? Is it less than one equals zero equals infinity? Well, if it doesn't equal, if it doesn't equal zero or doesn't equal infinity, then we're going to do this. We're going to say it's less than one. Let me just show you what I mean. If this n approaches, is going to approach zero, then this has to also equal zero. If this, this stuff with n's approaches infinity, then this x is also going to be infinity. So we check the n's. Stuff with n's in it, then, well, that's going to approach the number one. So since it doesn't go to zero or infinity, we're now going to say, okay, let's make this less than one then. And then we can go from there. So the only thing I have left then is the absolute value of this part of it. So that's where you can break up the absolute value. And we'll go say negative one is less than one third times X minus five, which is less than a positive one. And then we just solve that from here. Let me skip those steps. Okay, so we're now very close to knowing the interval of convergence. We've go, we go from 2 to 8. What we have to check is what's happening at 2, what's happening at 8. So the only way we can do that, I'm going to write down here so that you see this in red, we're going to check the endpoints. And maybe you could write that off on the side here and just kind of like draw an arrow to it or something. Like this is the point where we check the endpoints. So I'm going to say I want to figure out well, what happens when x equals 2 and what's going to happen when x equals 8. So I plug a 2 into where there's an x up here and see what that series looks like. Well, that's the series, and I could simplify this a bit and so that it would look like this, because that 3 to the n, 3 to the n, it's just going to become a negative 1 to the n when you combine this stuff up. So that's what the series would look like. Well, that is definitely diverging. It's just whatever n is, it's going negative, then positive, negative, then positive. So this is a divergent series. So if it diverges, then I know it's not going to include 2. So now I do the, exactly the same thing for x equals 8. So let's set up the series. And you can see here, this series is just going to become... Uh, this cancels one n, so it's just the series n. Well, that diverges. It's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So since they both diverge, what we have here is the interval of convergence is from 2, which is less than x, which is less than 8. That's the interval of convergence. And our radius, okay, this is the tricky part here. So what is the radius? The radius is from the middle to the edge of the interval. Well, the middle was x equals c. That's the center, right? x equals five in this case. X equals five is the center. So from five to eight is three. From five to two is three. So the radius is three. And there's my answer. All right, that's how you do this. So again, I apologize. You got to write so small. So the hardest part is simplifying it. And then, well, I shouldn't say that's the hardest part. I think the hardest part is actually checking the endpoints here, but you got to remember to check the endpoints. So you know if it's an or equal to, or if it's just a, a less than. All right, let's do the next problem. So I'm going to start off by writing small up here so I can fit everything in. Although I don't think this one, well, we'll see. N approaches infinity. So there's my N plus 1 plugged in. Now I'm going to multiply it by this reciprocal. Okay, and now let's see how can we simplify this. It simplifies all the way down to just X minus 2. The 3's cancel. The X minus 2 to the nth is going to cancel. Okay, so now what happens here? If N approaches infinity, there's no N's in here. So I'm just going to say, all right, so it's not zero and it's not infinity. So uh, let's say that it is going to be less than one and solve it from there. So you're going to have the negative one. X minus two is in between negative one and positive one. Solve that. We're going from one to three. And then you check the endpoints. Okay, so that's an important step that you do not forget. So I'm going to look at what the series happens to the series at X equals one. And what happens to the series if X equals three? So for X equals one, my series would look like this, and that's just alternating between three and negative three. That is definitely diverging if you start adding those up. And my series for when x equals three would look like this. So I plug in the three there, three minus two is one. 
Well, that's just the sum of uh, the series is just a three because one of the n is one. So that also diverges. So what am I left with here? My interval of convergence is between one and three, and we are not including either of the endpoints. And then the radius is from the center, and the center was what on this one? The center was x equals two. That's my center. So we're going from two to three, from two to one. The radius is one. Now let me point out on this problem, if the instructions were only asking for the radius and not the both radius and interval of convergence, just the radius, then we would not need to worry about checking the endpoints. All this stuff, we could just, who cares? We don't even have to deal with it. That was That's if they only ask for the radius. But if it's asking for the interval of convergence, then yeah, you got to get this interval and a check to see if the endpoints are included in it. All right, let's do another one. Okay, this one, let's start off the same way. N approaches infinity, the limit of, plug in an n plus one. Well, it's already an n plus one, so that's gonna make it n plus one plus one. So that gives me n plus two there, and then this is n plus one to the third power times the reciprocal. Okay, now let's take that thing and simplify it. Again, I know some of you are really mad at me because I didn't give you a ton of room on this. I'm trying to save paper. Uh, n approaches infinity of, how's this simplify? This is an n plus one, this is an n plus two. So I could separate this, x plus two to the n times x plus two to the two. Okay, those are gonna cancel. Yeah, I get just an x plus two on top. There's no other x's, so I'll just put a one right there. And then my n's, it's gonna be n cubed over n plus one quantity cubed. Okay, what happens as n approaches infinity? So I, I always like to think back on this. Is it going to be zero or infinity? I check for those first, because if it is, then it's a much easier problem if it's equaling zero or infinity. So as n approaches infinity, this equals one, that whole piece right there, that's just a one. So it's not going to infinity, it's not going to zero, so I've gotta set this thing up and just say, okay, it's gonna be, gotta be less than one. This part of it has to be less than one since that's just, that's gone. So now I can jump to negative one, less than x plus two, less than positive one, solve that. So it's from negative three to negative one. And now I do the same thing that I've been doing before, which is make sure I check the endpoints. Check those endpoints. So I'm going to check at x equals negative 3, and I'm going to check at x equals negative 1. So the series, what does that thing look like if x equals negative 3? Well, here it is. This is actually an alternating series that converges. So this one converges. Now what about at x equals negative 1? Okay, well that looks a little bit weird. Well, you can simplify this to just say that's the same thing as taking the series of 1 over n cubed. And we know that's a, that is a power series with the 3 there on bottom, so that one definitely converges. So since they both converge, that means that we're going to have on our interval of convergence an or equal to on both of those inequalities. So there's our interval of convergence, and the radius is, I believe, one again, right? The center is at negative two. Yeah, that center is going to be x equals negative two. That's my center. And so from negative two to negative one is one. From negative two to negative three is one. So radius is one. And there's our answer. Okay, the last two problems are going to be much easier and faster for us. You'll see here, except for maybe the simplifying part, that's not quite as easy for this one. Uh, so you can, you don't have to squeeze it in here. I'm telling you right now, this one's not gonna take as much room. So we can go ahead and start off down here. Okay, so this one looks pretty crazy. I'm gonna actually show you the simplification on this one because it uh, there is a lot going on. So I'll show, I'll write out my steps here so you can see this next step. Now you can see what I've done here, this 2n plus two, that's where I did 2n plus two, 2n plus two minus one, 2n plus, two minus two, so that's where these are coming from, factorial, and then now I can just start canceling some things out. So that's gonna be gone. Oop, different color. That's gonna be gone. That's gonna be gone. My n factorial is gonna be gone. X to the two n plus two, and this x to the two n, those canceled and just gave me uh, x to the, well, that two is not supposed to be there. Hold on. That's just supposed to be a one. There's nothing left down there, uh, right? Because the x to the 2n cancels. With that x to the 2n, I am just left with x squared. Yeah, that's, that works. Okay, and then uh, anything else cancel? No. All right, so now what does this limit approach? So usually we just focus on the x squared and we work it from there, less than 1. But in this example, the n, what is happening? On top, I've got an n squared, right? I'm going to have an n times n. So the degree on top, the power is going to be larger than down here because it's just going to be a, to the first power. We're on, on top, I'm gonna have an n squared. So I'm gonna have an n squared over n, which means that this limit is going to equal infinity regardless of this. So what happens if it equals infinity? Let's go back up to our notes where we said that if it equals infinity, then the series converges only to the center. 
So what we write for our answer is converges only to x equals, now what's the center? You have to look back up here and see if there was anything within the x. Nope, there's not. So it's just x minus 0 because the center is a 0. So it converges to x equals 0. Now the radius, if it ever converges just to the center, then there is no radius. And so we just say the radius equals 0. The radius is nothing. It's not going down from anywhere. So that's how you do the ones where the limit equals infinity. All right, one more problem. Stay with me. You're doing well. We just got this last one. So let's set up our initial limit with the ratio test. Okay, here's our setup. Now let's uh, simplify this. And what do we get here? And to infinity, absolute value. We got some stuff that's going to cancel. Here, let me write this out. All right, so this should simplify down to this. Now, before I just say less than one and start solving, I want to think about what is happening with this fraction. This n, as this approaches infinity, that right there, use a different color, that thing is going to approach zero. Well, if this approaches zero, then the whole thing's got to approach zero. So if I say that this thing equals zero, then I'm done. There's nothing else to worry about. I go back and think, well, if it equals zero or infinity, I stop. If it equals zero, then the series is going to converge for all values of x. So that's what I write here, converges for all values of x. Or you could say an interval from negative infinity to infinity. Now, what about the radius? If, there, if it's going from negative infinity to the infinity, you say the radius just equals infinity. It's infinite radius. It goes on forever and ever. Okay, so we've covered them all. Hopefully, uh, that's the stuff makes sense to you. You're going to get really good at simplifying this ratio test stuff after practicing with this. So rock that master check, and I will see you back in our next lesson.